The Melbourne correspondent for the Overdrive radio and podcast program, Christopher Leadbeater, is a mad, keen Jaguar fan. Now, he dabbles with old Jaguars for two reasons. He's happiest when he can fiddle with cars, and the second thing is that money is an object. We have tested some new Jaguars, but only to report on. We haven't yet stretched to the point of buying one. Christopher's latest adventure was to work on a Mark I Jaguar to iron out a few issues so he could have a spirited drive while still sitting in the car with all the ambience of the original model. I spoke to him from his lockdown home in Melbourne. G'day, Chris. Oh, hi, Dave. How are you going? Good, mate. Good. You had a Mark I when you were young, didn't you? They were much cheaper than the Mark IIs? Well, actually, I had two Mark Ones. The uh, first one was a uh, 2.4, very, almost my very first car that's used more oil than it did petrol. <laughs> the second Jag that I had was a, a, a Mark One 3.4 four-wheel disc brake car, four-speed overdrive MOS box, and it's that car that I had most fun with. So I was looking for something very similar, but very hard to find these days. So I managed to find a two-and-a-half-litre Mark I, which had been converted to manual, and the manual box was a MOS box. What was the most appealing part of that car for you? I guess the most appealing part of the car is that it had had a a significant restoration on the body, so all the rust had been dealt with and new sills put in, and it had been resprayed, and it had been trimmed, and the trim is good, but it's vinyl, but uh, but it's acceptable. It had a MOS box, you said. What were some of the other mechanical characteristics of it? The early 2.4s had, with the 2.5 litre with the four-speed MOS box, had drum brakes. So it had drum brakes and it had a 2.5 litre motor with Solex carburetors. They're they're not the the quickest sort of jag that you could have. And and I wanted to get back to the experience of the 3.4. So it was a matter of putting a different sort of motor in it, maybe upgrading the brakes and putting a different gearbox in it. That was the idea. We drove it before the change with the Moss box. It had a long throw to it, didn't it? Going from second to third was like a forearm shot for a left-handed <laughs> tennis player. <laughs> that and no synchro and first. Well, anyway, first was sort of useless. It sort of runs out at about you know, three miles an hour. They're a good old box, but they're not, they're not very good for modern traffic. Without power steering or that? No power steering. No, absolutely not. It still hasn't got power steering as it is. I I don't mind that. It's a little bit difficult with parking, but it's actually quite a good feel. You drove it Mm. when you were down in Melbourne last and you quite liked the feedback that the steering was giving you and the the car Mm. itself. Particularly electric steering now has lost some of that really lovely feel to it that you can get in very modern cars. You had, however, some other engines and such that you wanted to put into it what what mechanics did you have available yeah well some some time ago i mean i always had this in the back of my mind but some time ago a motor came available for sale which is a 4.2 liter jag motor probably from the 60s and it had a couple of good go bits it had been rebuilt by someone and it had been uh, had, had new pistons uh, pistons and rings it had a new oil pump it had new water pump it had conrods that were drilled in the center to feed the gudgeon pins and it was a quite a good good motor so i had that and it had a series 3 xj big valve head on it which was good and that motor is now in the car with twin two inch su's it's also nine to one compression ratio and the gearbox Gearbox is now a uh, out of a 1964 Mark II. It's a four-speed overdrive, all synchro gearbox. Did it fit in well? Yeah, it, it fits quite well in relation to the mountings, etc. But it, it, of course, because the previous gearbox, the Boss Box, didn't have an overdrive, so we had to alter the tail shaft because it was uh, too long. Hmm. Uh, I guess there are a couple of modern bits on it. Uh, one is an aluminium radiator, which is a fantastic piece of kit. It's got a great Italian fan on it. The car never overheats. It's brilliant. And it's got a fully programmable one, two, three distributor that you can program from your your iPhone. So <laughs> That's a little bit different from yours and my day. Yes, indeed. But it's the one concession I made because it needed, the engine needed tuning because of the nine to one compression, big valve head and the SUs. Working the SUs out was interesting. Mm. 
Well, we'll get to that too, but also you had to do a fair bit around the front end, didn't you? Oh, yes, quite quite a lot on the front end. So the front end was completely rebuilt, so it was rebushed and uh, brand new ball joints, etc., put in. But we also I also managed to get a kit from S&G Barrett in England, which was uh, a ventilated four-spot disc brakes, which were a bolt-on to the hubs. And we also put in uh, completely new brake lines right through the whole car. And uh, we also put in um, a new brake booster. And the rear end, we managed to adapt disc brakes to the back as well. So it's not concourse, you're not aiming at that? No, and, you know, the concourse people wouldn't like particularly what we've done, I suppose, because it doesn't have a, a, its original engine in it and it doesn't even have an engine that was made with that car because they only came out in 2.4 and 3.4 but, uh, or the, the, the gearbox or the aluminium radiator. But, uh, look, I think they're, they're, they're great upgrades. They make the car... Uh, a lovely drivable car and they make the car reliable and they uh, make it a pleasure to drive, yeah. But you said getting the tuning and the balance right of the engine took a bit of effort? Oh, yes, indeed. You know, because the SUs... Uh, of course, SUs, if you go and look on the SU site and you uh, you go into their haystack option, it gives you the options of the weights of the springs, the needles, the jets... It gives you a whole pile of different options, so many that it's almost mind-boggling. So I had a starting point of going back to a 4.2 litre uh, uh, XJ6 engine with twin SU, two-inch SUs, and started there with the green springs and the, the right needles, and that seemed to suit the car. Still has a little flat spot, which we've got to walk at, work out on the dyno with the uh, the tuning of the car through the distributor. But, yeah, it worked out okay. It the, took a long time, though. Patience is a virtue. Yeah. Yeah, and, and looking at the mixture of, you know, every time you went for a drive, you'd pull a plug out to have a look at the colour of the plug to see if it was rich or lean. Balancing the car because, of course, everybody that's got a Jag understands what's going on there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but the gearbox, you had to do a little bit of work to squeeze that in? Ah, yeah. Well, the, the gearbox was interesting because we used the bell housing off the, bell, bell housing off the, the, the 2.4 and when I'd uh, attached it all, so the bell housing was on the gearbox and we put it on the motor, lo and behold, as you, as you turned the motor over, it would hit something inside the bell housing. So the new clutch plate, Borg and Beck, uh, fingered clutch plate and uh, um, pressure plate actually fouled the the inlet the the insert where the slave cylinder for the clutch is. So that had to be ground down as a modification. But after that, it was fine. Went on and uh, it's doing good service. And it sounds all right. Sounds pretty good, really. <laughs> it does now have what some may crassly call the hot engine for the car and that, yet inside is still that beautiful timber finish. When I was a young lad and looked inside longingly at cars that had this glorious finish, it excited me into the motoring world. This still has that. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, I didn't go for the highly glossed sort of finish of the wall. And I, I did it with tongue oil, and the tongue oil it gives it a, a sort of a, a gloss. Oh, I suppose it's, you could describe it as satin gloss, but it's not really satin. It's got a little bit more gloss than that. But the walnut is particularly lovely. The Not having so much shine on it actually brings the colour of the walnut out. And it's certainly very, uh, yes, as I, as I like to boast, I drive a car without, without many options. <laughs> Although I did have two speed wipers and a window washer. Ooh, a <laughs> window washer. Yeah. Luxury. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> did you set yourself a timetable? Or was this, I'll get it done when I can? Yeah, what, well, what prompted you to finish it? Actually, because I'm retired and, and my son and I have got a warehouse and I've got a, a, a hoist in there, I thought this is going to be a great project. You know, we're going to uh, take a time over it and enjoy every bit of it because I rewired the whole car and, you know, did, redid the engine bay and, and did a whole pile of things in there, put the battery in the boot, etc. And we were taking our time, you know. It was going to be probably a couple of years didn't quite work out that way. Mm -hmm. Quicker or slower? Uh, quicker. So Quicker is unusual. Why? Well, about six months in, uh, I was out with my daughter and her fiancé, and 
I was saying to her, which of the Jags would you like to, you know, use for your wedding? Do you want the uh, XJC or maybe we could take you in the XJS convertible? And uh, she said, no, 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 Dad, I want the white car. Well, at this point, the white car was in a million pieces all over the garage floor. And I said, oh, fine, dear, that'll be okay. (laughs) So we burnt the midnight oil. Why do you think she wanted the white car? It just had the elegance and convenience? Uh, well, Jessica loves old things, and I think the... Uh, yeah, that's hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that uh, the car it was certainly Jess and Charlie. You know, they're, they're both into retro things, and it is a, a lovely car in that sense. So, And it's white, and I suppose that's sort of wedding. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, it worked out quite well. I think we've got a couple of photos there on the site. That, that, hmm. that show how nice it looked at that time and that point. It's much better than being crass and getting a stretched limo oh, or something, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Who wants stretched limos? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember taking Matthew, our son, to a formal in a 1936 cord. It wasn't mine. Oh, nice. uh, and, and he was kingpin, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true, yeah. Of course, the car was slightly unfinished. I wasn't able to sort of get it to uh, a wheel aligner, so it sort of had a lot of toe in and it it was sort of bouncy, but at the speeds we were driving at the wedding, it didn't really matter, but it was certainly unfinished. Chris, uh, what are you going to do with it? I enjoy it, really. I wouldn't mind doing a bit of uh, clubbing, hill climbing, a bit of work with going around a track with a club just because it's a great, fun car to drive. Um, it, oh, well, I should have added it. We've, we've put a heavier sway bar on the front. The springs are slightly uprated and uh, also the shock absorbers. So it, it actually handles quite well. Hmm. So to enjoy it for what it is without becoming a, a mad hoon race f- fanatic? No, no, don't. The racing, far too expensive. <laughs> So some lap dashes and hill climbs. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I've got a mate who's got an MG midget that he's shoehorned a Rover VTEC engine into, which and he's pretty keen to you know have a bit of a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that will be both timing and elegance, I would think. Wouldn't that be the criteria? Absolutely. <laughs> Chris, thanks for your time. Okay, see you later. As a postscript, his daughter Jessie had a tradition to keep up with. Chris's first daughter had a Jag and a Daimler as wedding cars. Of course, Chris's attitude is biased by his mechanical understanding and his long-term commitment to Jaguars. In the next interview, Jessie gives her own perspective of growing up with a Jaguar file, including school trips, breakdowns, and finally the triumph of the wedding. <laughs> 